The Return to Bloody Nights. The Return to Bloody Nights is one of the most Scott-like FNAF fan games I've played in recent times. From the quality of the story and the little details, to the gameplay and the atmosphere. And no, the game isn't set in Britain. Return to Bloody Nights is a FNAF fan game with the main developer being Kazovsky, with a few other people. So this is most definitely a passion project, which I commend them for. From the story to the visual details, along with the gameplay, th there's a lot to unpack. It was honestly just a fun and entertaining FNAF fan game, um, but a bit frustrating and we'll get to that. Let's first talk about the story. The story of the game is told with a phone call between William Afton and Henry at the start of every night, along with phone calls in the gameplay sections from someone named Waffle Brogy. Hello, it's Waffle Brogy here, and welcome to your second night on the job. The guy is a big highlight of the game and reminds me a lot of Cave Johnson from Portal. Speaking of gameplay, the game's graphics are very well done, with a claustrophobic environment, a lot like FNAF 1's and Pizzeria Simulator's environment, but cranked up to 100. This is mostly because the game has a really small field of view, which makes everything look way closer and zoomed in. Maybe a bit too close, but I don't really have a big problem with it, unlike some people who like to have 200 FOV in their games. The way the game works is really simple, and I won't really go much in depth. For most of the animatronics, it's just if they get near your door, you close it. Ooh, how shocking. But because of how claustrophobic the atmosphere of the game is, along with the animatronics being very unpredictable, it really gets to you on how fucked you really are. There's also one distraction animatronic, the puppet. He's just there to distract you from the other animatronics. He's really not much of a threat. You just have to shine your light on him to get rid of him. But even though I don't like his gameplay, his design is really cool. He's like this tall, stretchy puppet thing. And I really have a knack for tall, menacing characters. The last one I remember was me watching PewDiePie playing Slenderman while I was hiding in the comments section when I was six. The prize corner where Puppet resides also has a lot of references and easter eggs. Even some like obscure ones like the plushie from Baddington's VHS series Harmony and Horror or Cuphead for some reason. One problem I had with the game is that it almost gives you no guidance on how to deal with the animatronics. It's definitely one of those games where you'll have to experiment in trial and error. Which speaking of experimenting, the jump scares and the death screens are really cool with this gory shot of the night guard being completely torn to shreds. Some of the jump scares also manage to consistently scare me, which doesn't happen that often. Dad, I'm so dead. Ha! <laughs> Fuck sakes, man, this is way too hard. Anyways, let's get back to the story. William Afton, along with Henry Emily, made a pizzeria called Fred Bear's Family Diner. And the story goes something like this. It's close to the opening day of Fred Bear's Family Diner. Henry's concerned about the safety of the animatronics, and William's response is the classic, Dude, trust me. Henry's also concerned about William's mental health after he divorced his wife. Later on, employees get to see the animatronics and are concerned with their looks and spring lock mechanisms. Hey, William, it's me. So, we got a few complaints about the animatronics. Come on, Henry, not with this again. Look, trust me, that's very much so false information. They only saw a work in progress. This is very much so cap. Also, look, Henry, I made the bear do a funny Fortnite dance. Henry's concern grows, but William wouldn't do something stupid, right? Right? Hey William, it's me. Are you ready for the opening day tomorrow? No, Henry. My ex-wife hates me and spreads lies about me to my own kids. I hate my kids, Henry. Well, that's unfortunate. Anyways, just know that family matters. I hope everything goes well for you. Thanks for your concern, Henry. But go fuck yourself. And then, the bite of 83 happens. Who's that? Hey, William, I'm really sorry to hear what happened, man. That's really unfortunate. Honestly, I, I feel for you, man. I feel for you. Man. 
Before we go forward with the video, I have a question to ask. How could Henry help William with his mental problems and to help him not become a killer? Hey, William, I know you're not doing well and your life's been going tough lately. Oh, yes, that's right, Henry. Well, I think I got the thing just for you, William. Wait, what? What, what you mean? Well, have you heard of Raid Shadow Legends? That's right, Raid is a sponsor of today's video and they're celebrating their fourth year anniversary with special events. Henry, wh what are you talking about? Are you all right in the head? I'm sure you've all heard of Raid, and that's for good reason. Raid is one of the most popular RPG games on mobile. The game has over 650 completely unique characters, all from different factions, with amazing character and graphic detail, on par with console and PC games but on mobile. But don't you worry, greasy PC sweats, because you can play the game on PC as well now. There are billions of ways you can customize your champions with new champions coming out every single month, along with new content and updates. They also have over 80 million downloads with millions of players, so they're doing something right. Now, this April, Raid is celebrating their ongoing event, Egg Hunt, but they're not just any normal eggs, nah nah nah. This isn't your alphabet spaghetti. Instead, you'll have to hunt for dragon eggs by going through a flaming portal which takes you to the world of Raid Shadow Legends, all in 3D in AR. All you need to do to join the event is to download Raid Shadow Legends using the link below, copy your in-game player ID, and head over to egghunt.plarium.com from April 14th to May 15th. You can scour through the dragon's lair using your phone, and if you find the hidden egg, you'll be in for a chance to win game awards along with real life prizes, ranging from legendary raid champions to Amazon gift cards with a total value of $20,000. On the Econ website, you'll find a special promo code that everyone can use to earn small gifts in game. So last month, raid celebrated their fourth year anniversary. Now imagine if you had to invite four of the champions to a dinner party to celebrate the fourth year anniversary. Well, if I had to choose, first, I would definitely invite Ninja, Tyler Blevins. Yes. Fortnite blue hair man is in this game. After he railed me like that from behind. Next, I would definitely pick Abess from the Sacred Order faction. You know, something about her looks, like her golden armor. I mean, just, I mean, look at her clothing. She looks like she knows a thing or two about fashion. Next up, I'd definitely invite Sir Nicholas from the Sacred Order clan yet again, because he's literally buff Santa Claus. And because of that, all of his abilities are slow related. And I love making other people suffer. And lastly, we gotta add a weird one so let's go with gorda from the ogren tribes so if you haven't played raid shadow legends yet now's probably the best time so use my link in the description or scan my qr code to get some bonuses like the epic champion drake and other useful things like energy refills skill tome and xp boosters i do actually play this game from time to time way before i was even sponsored thanks to raid for sponsoring this video so that's basically how the story goes. If you manage to beat Night 6, there's also a cutscene where William confesses about the murders of the kids and plans to blame it all on Henry because he was jealous of Henry taking all the credit and that this whole time he was planning to make the animatronics spread fear and to kill. I have built a new place for my new creations. A place that will instill wonder and fear into the heart of all who bear witness. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I feel like this reveal was very abrupt and maybe I missed the point, but who knows? William being a crazy alcoholic wouldn't be that far off from his logic in the mainline FNAF games. I also really appreciate all the little details, like the murdered children being shown in the credits section on a newspaper, or how you can see Henry's arrest in the final cutscene after you beat Night 6, or all of the missing children newspapers in your office with the William Afton completion certificate in the middle. Yeah, and there's there's no foreshadowing in that at all. But in all seriousness, it's very clear that the developers really cared about the game and wanted to make something really unique and memorable, which I commend them for, as I said. The only big issues that I had with the game was a glitch where one of the animatronics would kill me through the closed door, which only started happening on the final night and it happened twice. One of the times I was literally mere seconds away from beating the night, which really pissed me off. Wait, what? 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 
What the fuck? Before I close this off, there's also this uh, mini game section that you have after beating every night where you have to use this, I don't know, it's like a ghost scanner to see if the animatronics are possessed, I guess. But also one other thing, if you manage to complete the whole game, you will get a special cutscene. Which I didn't grind for because I really could not do the challenges. I don't know if this challenge is mandatory, but you literally have to play the game for six hours. And with that, we made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting me. We're almost at 9,000 subscribers, which is honestly crazy. And because of that, I like to host a Q&A. So if you have any questions you'd like to be answered, make sure to write a comment with Q&A in the comment. I'll make sure to answer as many as I can, and I'll probably host it at 10k subs. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoy my content and you'd like to see more of it, please subscribe. It really helps me out, and I'd be really glad to have you on my channel. You can also like, dislike, and comment. I also have a few other announcements that I'll likely make in the future, but I don't know if I'll make a separate video for it, but there are some exciting things that I'd like to announce later. So have an eye out for that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. See ya! Thanks for bringing the note, Karen. <sighs> Karen, Karen, Karen. She's always trying to bring down the company.